want you to hit me as hard as you can. Video games are a relatively new medium, and movie adaptations were inevitable. But being the first one had its fair set of challenges. And the Super Mario Brothers movie provided the perfect blueprint of how not to do it. From ditching the source material to ignoring the target audience, the film started off on the wrong foot and it only got worse from there. Competing scripts, mismanaged directors, intoxicated actors, everyone involved has since asked the same question. What the f*** happened to this movie? In the late 80s, Nintendo was on top of the world. They had single-handedly revived the video game market after the crash a few years earlier. The NES was the undisputed console king, and their merchandise was everywhere, including the movies. In December 1989, Fred Savage starred in the road trip comedy The Wizard. While the movie is fairly unremarkable, it remains a modern cult classic because it was basically a feature-length commercial for Nintendo. The video games, the power glove, the eSports? The film was a mild hit, thanks to Nintendo's sly marketing ploy of making it the first chance Americans got to see Super Mario Bros. 3 in action. It's called a warp whistle. Of course, after the game came out, it was a multi-million dollar seller, proving again that Nintendo's flagship franchise and that lovable Italian plumber were a bona fide phenomenon. But where could they go from there? By late 1990, Nintendo of America president Minoru Arakawa was listening to film pitches for Super Mario. Major studios came and went, offering millions for the rights, but Arakawa was most interested in the pitch from two-time Oscar-nominated director Roland Joffe. Joffe, with his producing partner Jake Everts, ran a small independent production company, Light Motive. Their filmography consisted of heavy period dramas and were far from the candy-colored world of the Mushroom Kingdom, and they seemed like unlikely candidates. After all, they were offering a fraction of what the studios were willing to pay. However, Arakawa liked his more adult-oriented take on Mario. In October, Joffe flew out to Nintendo headquarters in Japan and had to convince the rest of the company's executives on his vision. Nintendo thought an edgier version of Mario could pull in non-gaming audiences, and they assumed their mascot was strong enough to withstand anything. It would be impossible to make a bad movie with Mario. Then Joffe sealed the deal by giving Nintendo 100% of the merchandising rights. For $2 million, Joffe left Japan with Nintendo's blessing and total creative control to make the first video game movie ever. But that was the problem. This had never been done before. How the hell do you make a movie out of a video game whose entire plot could be summed up in a single paragraph on the back of a game manual? Removed from player inputs, all that remains are paper-thin characters and a nonsensical fantasy world. Joffe asked Rain Man screenwriter Barry Morrow to tackle this dilemma. Morrow's first draft focused on the brother relationship of Mario and Luigi. It was a road movie, where one brother learns to get along with his simple-minded sibling. If that sounds familiar, it's because it's the exact plot of Rain Man. And the wizard! The script quickly became known as Drain Man. Joffe even had Dustin Hoffman interested in the title role. Soon after, Morrow walked away, when Arakawa personally shot down Hoffman without an explanation, and his script was deemed too heady and serious by Joffe and Nintendo. I didn't actually finish the script. I had like the last scene I was working on when the courier arrived and said, I've been told to take it, whether you're finished or not. And I got, I said, I, I have to type in the end. No, you don't. <laughs> Off it went. Back to square one. In came screenwriters Jim Genuine and Tom S. Parker. In early 1991, they had just sold their first screenplay, the channel-flipping adventure Stay Tuned, and really took to the material. They saw the Super Mario movie like The Wizard of Oz, with an outsider helping a world of fantasy creatures fend off an evil ruler. The brothers' relationship was at the heart of it, while the comedy came from parodying fairy tales, and as they said years later, essentially what we did was what Shrek did, only we did it before Shrek. Nintendo loved it. Now Joffe needed to find a director. Greg Beeman was the first attached. He only had one film under his belt, Licensed to Drive, but was finishing up his next, the sci-fi comedy, Mom and Dad Save the World. Rumoredly, after Joffe saw a rough cut of that film, he immediately fired Beeman. 
Somewhere after that, Joffe tried to get Danny DeVito to star, and possibly direct, much to Nintendo's delight, but he passed. Joffe even met with Harold Ramis, who was initially excited and a big Mario fan, but also turned it down. Then, for whatever reason, Joffe turned to Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel, who also had only made one film, the box office bomb DOA. But truly, the two were mostly known as co-creators of the British TV personality. This is Max Ma Ma Headroom. A quasi-AI robot TV host thing. Okay, listen, I can't explain Max Headroom. It was the 80s. It didn't make much sense then. It really doesn't make much sense now. So the directors were a bizarre choice. <laughs> <laughs> Though not overly familiar with the Mario games, they liked the challenge of the project. At that time, there was a very hardcore movement against video games, and a lot of anti-video game sentiment. I wanted to make a film that would open it up and get parents interested in video games. Discussing with Joffe, they all agreed on a darker film, in the vein of Tim Burton's Batman or the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Therefore, Genuine and Parker's well-received script was tossed. That summer, Super Mario World was released alongside the new Super NES. The game setting was Dinosaur Land, and this sparked Morton and Jane Kell's idea of the movie being a prequel to the games. They then hired screenwriters Parker Bennett and Terry Runte to help flesh this out. And the first question that came up in our minds was, where did it all come from and why did it happen? And as soon as we started asking those questions, everything seemed to slot into place. And then that sparked off this whole thing about dinosaurs and that um, uh, their extinction and why dinosaurs aren't around anymore. They pursued this concept of a meteor 65 million years ago hitting Earth, creating an alternate dimension where reptiles also evolved into humans. As Bennett described it, our take on it was that Nintendo interpreted the events from our story and came up with a video game. We basically worked backwards. I must say, we have a very exciting proposal. A video game based on your many adventures. The newest draft was less fantasy and more sci-fi, and the producers and Nintendo were on board for it. During all of this, casting was a challenge. Michael Keaton and Arnold Schwarzenegger both turned down King Koopa, aka Bowser. Tom Hanks wanted five million to star, but was considered not likable enough to get butts and seats. and his recent string of comedies somehow proved he wasn't dramatic enough to play Mario? Great. Crush a beer can. You feel better now? But Morton and Jane Cal suddenly soured on the current screenplay, an indecisiveness that became a recurring theme with the couple. They wanted Mario to be a carefree Bill Murray type, and while they're at it, why not make the script more Ghostbusters-like? So Bennett and Parker wrote another draft, finished in February of 1992. But before they got notes, they were fired. The financiers got annoyed with the delays and wanted cameras rolling already. Morton and Jen Kale decided to bring in veteran screenwriters Dick Clement and Ian Lafrené. Their instruction was to make the film more grounded, per Nintendo's request, and more action-packed. Their template was Die Hard, and their script even included a Bruce Willis cameo of him crawling through the air ducts of Koopa Castle. Morton loved it, and this was the first script sent out to actors in March. Whatever this screenplay was at the time, it was good enough to sign Dennis Hopper as King Koopa, John Leguizamo as Luigi, and finally, Bob Hoskins as Mario. Two months before shooting began, producers visited the North Carolina set. Blade Runner production designer David Snyder had converted a deserted cement factory, the same one used in Terminator 2, into the massive Dino Hatton set. The street may have been filled with silly Easter eggs, but per the script, the rest was a dirty, grungy affair, littered with criminals, hookers, and covered in some strange mucus. The producers were shocked and wanted changes. Joffe agreed the tone needed to be lightened up, but he was beginning to think that Morton and Jane Kell were a major problem, one he couldn't solve. To keep the project on schedule, he avoided firing the directors and instead hired yet another screenwriter. Joffe gave Bill and Ted's scribe, Ed Solomon, two weeks to make the script more fun. Joffe never told the directors about this rewrite. In May 1992, production began on the Super Mario Bros. movie, and things instantly spiraled out of control. Morton and Jane Kell were blindsided by Solomon's comical and kid-friendly script, 
as they flipped through it, they saw a complete disconnect between what was on the page and the sets that were already built. On the verge of quitting, they thought, perhaps naively, that they could make it all work. The actors, on the other hand, were pissed. This was not the script they signed on for. Morton had to defend a screenplay he himself hated. The production schedule was completely upended with this new script, forcing the directors to retrofit the order of scenes and sets to start with. To appease the complaints about the script, Joffe brought back Parker Bennett and Terry Runte to make on-set page rewrites. From that moment, the production turned into complete anarchy. The cast would get new lines on an hourly basis. It got to the point that the actors wouldn't bother reading them until the cameras were rolling because they knew they'd change again. Richard Edson and Fisher Stevens just said screw it and improvised all of their own stuff. Morton's script became a Frankenstein mess of pages pulled from every other version of the screenplay since Morrow's original. It was disorganized chaos with no clear leader. The film's concept was enhanced by the joyful and unpredictable imaginations of directors Rocky Morton and Annabelle Jankel. Each onset story told over the years paints a picture of a directing team out of their depth. The directors would give everyone two conflicting points of view on any one question, and then double back on it hours later. This led to crew members finishing tasks quickly as possible before their minds changed. The duo loved the design of the Goombas so much that they wanted them front and center, causing even more script changes. Same goes for Yoshi, who was added in the middle of the production. They would give Oscar-winning cinematographer Dean Semler shot lists with condescending notes on which lenses to use and how to light the set. According to Morton, he and Jane Kell were pulled into the producer's trailers and chewed out every night about every little thing that they were doing wrong. Yet the issues persisted. You know what, if, if you just want to end this right now, I would understand. Everyone had different ideas of what kind of movie they were making. On one end, the directors refused to put Mario and Luigi in their signature overalls until the producers demanded it. This aversion towards clothing might explain why they had actual strippers ready and willing to show their talents during the disco scene. Meanwhile, after seeing the innovative work being done on then-in-production Jurassic Park, the animatronics team suddenly had to make their dinosaurs cuter. Hmm, I don't know. Oh, okay, you got me. This constant state of confusion strained everyone's relationship. Hopper got so frustrated with the total lack of professionalism, he berated the directors and producers for nearly three hours. Leguizamo stated in his autobiography, the shoot seemed to take forever, but at least there was Samantha and Bob and Bob Scotch. Yep, both Leguizamo and Hoskins admitted to drinking heavily on set, just to get through it all. Because Bennett and Runte were delivering new pages to everyone, they found themselves in the awkward position of being mediaries for the cast, directors, and producers. Their already difficult job was made even more frustrating by the fact that the actors weren't talking to the directors, and the directors weren't talking to the producers, and nobody was talking to Nintendo. And we haven't even gotten to all the other crazy crap, like the infamous incident where Morton poured coffee on an extra because their costume was too clean, or the stuntman whose crotch started on fire after a stray spark landed on his lap, or the electrician who nearly died grabbing an electrified lever who then had to be kicked away from the source, or when Leguizamo broke Hoskins' finger while driving the van. So Bob is standing on the side of the, with his hand on the, on the door, the sliding door, and so I gunned it, right? And then they said, they said, stop at that mark. And I stopped as hard as I could. And the door came flying out, smashed his poor little Bob Hoskins fingers. And he went into some Cockney Tourette's thing. Oh, bloody geezer, me, me cows and coke. Oh, bloody geezer. The film's production ballooned past the planned 10 weeks to 15 and was way over budget. The producers forced the directors to finish the movie. To do it, they had to ditch their original ending of an epic fight with Mario atop the Brooklyn Bridge, defeating King Koopa with a bomb. bomb In its place, Koopa in a bucket, and two painted super scopes. Aw, hell yeah, no, no. With all the drama going on, the special effects team found themselves in the fortunate position of being mostly ignored. Though Morton argues that the producer's insistence on not editing digitally made the effects suffer, the team still had a lot of freedom to push boundaries. 
It may seem odd to think of the Super Mario Bros. movie pioneering breakthroughs with its visual effects, the same year Jurassic Park came out, but it is true. Most importantly, it was the first movie to use Autodesk Flame, an image compositing software that's now a standard in the industry. Towards the end of production, the LA Times conducted on-set interviews with the cast and crew. The directing duo declined to be interviewed. Among the many anecdotes in the finished article, like how everyone unlovingly called the directors Rocky and Annabelle the Flying Squirrel Show, or the Hydra, this is where most of the horror stories were first shared. Their perspective on the production, akin to a train wreck, wasn't far off. After the article came out, Morton said he was locked out of the editing room. When the producers decided the film needed more action, Morton and Jane Kell were not allowed to help with the reshoots, and the opening animation was made completely without their knowledge. Their agents dropped them immediately, and they were blackballed in Hollywood for years to come. Released on May 28, 1993, the first video game movie ever made was Dead on Arrival. The reviews were terrible, and even kids knew this wasn't what they wanted. Opening weekend, it was clobbered by Rennie Harlan's cliffhanger. And two weeks later, that other dino adventure 65 million years in the making trampled the box office. Mario Brothers was practically pulled from theaters before its fourth weekend. The film couldn't break 21 million on a budget of 48 million. But hey, for all the script revisions that happened throughout, by some miracle, the final product is by and large coherent. And removed from its origins, it's not much different than most of the oddball films of the late 80s and early 90s, like Mom and Dad Save the World, and stay tuned. For the most part, the film has been disowned by everyone involved, despite its rise as a cult classic. Morton said it was humiliating, Hopper said it was his only regret in his career, and Leguizamo said, oh man, that movie sucks, and I suck in it. Who are you? Luigi Mario. What, you got a problem with that? Hoskins in 2007 unloaded with the worst thing I ever did, Super Mario Brothers. It was a f***ing nightmare. The whole experience was a nightmare. It had a husband and wife directing team whose arrogance had been mistaken for talent. F***ing nightmare. F***ing idiots. But in his Cockney accent. Oh, geezer. It was also his only regret. The always polite Nintendo has never made a comment about the Super Mario Brothers movie. Although Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto has adopted, of all things, the name Mario Mario. Name, Mario. Last name, Mario. But actions speak louder than words. Nintendo has not since let any of their properties suffer the same fate. Even now, as they carefully explore an animated feature with illumination, they maintain a tight grip. And to be clear, Nintendo doesn't solely control the Pokemon company or their 22 films, 22? My God. Movie studios have tried for nearly three decades to crack the code on a good video game adaptation, and their failures far outweigh their successes. They either don't stay true to the games or take themselves too seriously. Some look terrible from the start. Others are promising disappointments. And there's whatever Uva Bowl was doing. Who's to say what the right formula is? Hollywood is going to keep trying regardless. In the last few years, some progress has been made, and 2019's Detective Pikachu may actually be the first to pull it off. Or it could be Sonic the Hedgehog. Link, here come to town. Come to save the Princess Zelda. Hello, MTV Multiplayer. I'm the director of House of the Dead, Blood Rain, Alone in the Dark. I do a lot of video game based movies and you're used to, to bash me always and uh, talk bad about me. Don't do that, but if you do that basically, then pronounce my name right. My name is U-W-E-B-O-L-L -L, and you pronounce it Uwe Boll and not U-E or E-V, it's Uwe Boll. Thanks, bye.